Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I have the privilege of introducing this year's recipient of the Human Rights Award for the City of Northfield. Each year, the Human Rights Commission receives nominations from citizens on individuals and organizations that have significantly contributed to the advancement of human rights in our community. After careful consideration of all the nominees, <clears throat> it became clear to the Human Rights Commission that one nominee stood out for his sustained contributions to social, racial, economic, housing, and environmental justice for many years, which has intersected both his professional and personal life in our community. Perhaps said best by the nominator, Scott is the epitome of service to those who are struggling and striving for social justice. While originally from Grand Rapids, Minnesota, Scott has been a member of our community for many years. After graduating St. Olaf College, Scott did have a corporate job up in the Twin Cities, I believe. But somewhere along the way, I'm suspecting he may have decided that uh, that wasn't his calling and transitioned to community-focused work in Northfield and the surrounding area. Scott was a youth soccer coach where he helped address racial barriers on his team. Scott was a youth pastor where he focused on providing a safe place for middle school and high school kids to practice diverse beliefs. Not easy, I believe. Scott was the executive director of the Northfield Union of Youth, AKA The Key, and in this period helped rebuild that organization with programs like helping homeless youth with short-term home stay programs and provided emotional support to those youth who had few or no adults in their lives they could turn to. Scott is now the executive director of the Northfield Community Action Center, which is an organization that has been serving our community for decades and was itself the recipient of this award in 2019. Under Scott's leadership, the CAC has done amazing things, such as working with local developers, organizers, and the city to create Hillcrest Village, which is the nation first, I believe, nation first net zero energy emergency shelter and supportive housing development just a few, uh, excuse me, a few blocks from here. During COVID, when, Faribo, when the Faribault food shelf was closing, Scott and the CAC stepped up to fill the gap for those in need. Outside of these activities, Scott and his wife Allison have been raising four young children, staying involved in their church, Northfield Dance Academy, and in his spare time, Somehow, Scott seems to be able to train and run ultra marathons, such as the Bear 100 in Utah, Cascade 100 in Washington, Trail Harakana 125K in northern Quebec. Scott, I'm going to give some recognition to your wife here because it seems like Allison is, is juggling quite a bit as well. But honestly, both, both of you are a rock star couple. <clears throat> While I'm certain I missed things we could talk more about, ladies and gentlemen, this year's recipient of the 2024 Human Rights Award is to a man who never stops helping a community in need, never stops in being a great husband and father, and apparently barely stops to sleep on the mountain trails he's running on. Please give a round of applause to Scott Wapita. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, for a lot of remarks. I had no idea you'd navigate from trail running to the key to so many things, so thank you. Um, this is an incredible honor. Uh, it's interesting to hear anybody talk about your life in some type of linear fashion, right? It almost sounds like you have a plan. <laughs> I think specifically for anybody who knows me um, or who's just gone through life knows that either A, I don't have a plan, or B, all plans are really messy, and it seems like we're all just trying to put one foot in front of the other. I'll just say I've taken a lot of side roads, side steps, and often backtracking. Yes, sometimes through mountain trails, but also I think just in my role um, in this community. And so it's an absolute um, honor to be recognized, and yet almost hum it's very humbling and almost at some point 
somewhat uncomfortable just to be laid open like this and to celebrate something. Um, and yet, I just really appreciate this moment. Thank you. Uh, in thinking about this award, I've been overwhelmed by the level of trust people in this community have shared with me. Friends, neighbors, youth, soccer players, soccer families, parents, families in general, and our community leaders have trusted me with their sacred, personal, and often very vulnerable stories. At first, I'll say it was just a few stories. I've been in this community for well over 20 years now. Over the years, it became a few hundred different stories, maybe a thousand stories when I started working at the Key Youth Center. Then it was three or maybe 4,000 different stories when I started at Community Action Center. And now, with this new Community Action Center we've built, we're up to about 15, maybe 16,000 different stories of individuals who have been open and honest about the struggles they face in life. And all of those stories have changed me dramatically. I didn't come to Northfield with a great vision of anything. Like I said, I didn't really have a plan. Um, and I've changed a lot. And I just really appreciate every one of those 15,000 people who have looked me in the eye, whether it was over coffee, whether there was tears, laughs, hopes, fears, dreams shared. But those stories changed me, and I think real trust is always shared both ways. And I consider it an honor to work, play, celebrate, and mourn along all of you and along everyone who shared their story with me or has heard parts of my story. Trust is beautiful, but it's fragile and vulnerable, and we have to recognize and honor it whenever trust is being shared. All of my roles in this community have been built on the success and challenges of those who came before me, and those who trusted me with the legacy they had built, I think specifically of stepping into the Northfield High School soccer program, and the many years Jorge Zucoloto uh, spent casting an inspiring vision for what a truly diverse and inclusive soccer pro program could be. And there's people like Jorge who taught me that you can be a soccer coach, but it has nothing to do with soccer. You're really in the business of youth development, which really, you're not in the business of youth development, you're in the business of being a person, and you're in the business of caring. And at the end of the day, I think no matter what position we think we hold, we're really just in the position of caring and holding those stories that are shared with us and that we share with others. I think about the thousands of youth at the Key, long before I was ever involved there, who cast an inspiring vision of what authentic youth empowerment could look like. I think about Jim Blaha and the 20 or more years he pushed CAC into the 21st century as a servant leader. And so after 20 years in this community, I'm honored to still have your trust and I promise to continue listening to your stories and experiences to ensure that we stand together in solidarity as a community. We've gathered tonight to honor those like Dr. King who came before us and have inspired us to acknowledge and continue the work in front of us. We have to hold those two things together. There is much work to do as there is much iniquity in the world around us. And we have much progress to be thankful for and tonight we get to hold both of those truths together. And so thank you for letting me be a small part of it tonight. Thank you.